Hey everybody, welcome back. Psychedelic here. Today I got three LPs I'm going to share. Two from online and then one I found at a marble museum locally, which I will explain a little more once I get to that record. But hopefully I'm going to keep it short today, semi-short, um, as I like to do in-depth reviews of these albums. So stick around. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed my last trip as I went a little crazy in that intro. Um, just love to have fun with it, you know, go all out. I can go all out, but I just kind of hold back just because, you know, I don't want to scare the little kids off that watch my videos. So, you know, then they, they start hallucinating and start, you know, seeing my face in their dreams, you know, with all these psychedelic visions floating around. <laughs> um, anyways, I'm having fun with it and glad, glad you guys enjoyed it. Um, I appreciate the feedback I got on that one. It's not like I'm trying to ask for, you know, appreciation, but I'm just kind of having fun with it on my own. So, um, as a matter of fact, uh, there's going to be a video coming up where you're going to see a different side of me. Probably a different side that you've never seen before. I don't want to say too much, but it's coming up. It might be my next video. We shall see. Um, it's in the works. Uh, you know, production is in, in the works. So, that's all I'm going to say. Anyways, with that, let's uh, dive in. So, uh, yeah, all these records I got great deals on. This is a particular record I was just looking up one night. I've always seen this cover online, and I just figured it was kind of maybe a $40 record, and um, just decided to look it up on eBay, and surprisingly enough, I found a copy for 5 bucks. Um, and this one typically goes for about 20 or so in clean shape, and this is Sundance self-titled on cap which is a subsidiary of mca kind of in relation to like uni label universal um one and only album i think they had like a previous band i forget their name though um I, i've never listened to it yet but this is kind of like a i would call it a west coast hard rock sound but it's got this kind of rural flavor to it um kind of country rock inspired but the good country rock you know, kind of emerging from the early 70s. And it's got kind of this, like, outcast biker vibe going for it. Um, and I explained on Instagram, this is kind of one of those records that really reminds me of, you know, the post-hippie era. You know, after the 60s kind of, you know, took its course. You know, a lot of these post-hippies, you know, kind of changed their style around. And, you know, a lot like the Grateful Dead did, you know. And it's sort of in that kind of vein. It's got a lot of dead sort of jams going on. But this band also gets compared to Grand Funk Railroad, which I could see that if they were originated out of the West Coast. Um, it's got kind of that Grand Funk energy in spots. Especially my favorite track off here, Chico Women, which I'll probably put in the intro of this video. As well as uh, Strange New Time. How relevant is that? <laughs> For a track but yeah overall the majority of this is really good um, the two closing tracks aren't as great but consistently pretty good and it gets kind of coined as psychedelic rock but it's really not it's it's more you know like I said hard rock mixed with country rock um, kind of in that commercial vein and it's just it's very consistent too as far as the flow goes so um, very glad to pick this up for, you know, under the 10 buck tag. Um, so like I said, you can pick these up probably for 20 bucks in decent shape. Um, just one of those cases where I just searched it out and found a nice cheap copy. And it's a promotional copy as well. Then this next one, um, this is one that I did like a, you know, my typical daily psych search on eBay one night. And I found this for 10 bucks, And I knew the reissue of this was relatively cheap. But I've never seen it for 10 bucks alone. So I had to grab this one. This was a reissue of What You Gonna Do by Christopher. And this is the other Christopher, not the Metro Media Christopher. Uh, based out of the South Carolina region. It's got a gatefold here. I don't know if the original had a gatefold. I don't believe so. It's got nice liner notes, kind of explaining their whole story of how they toured 
quite a bit. And this album was, you know, typical story where they pressed up 100 copies, kind of a lot of copies going out to different labels. Um, I think they did get in touch with one major label. I forget who it was, if it was Decca or some major label they picked up on. Kind of contacted them a little late because at this time they were kind of breaking up and done with the touring, kind of getting tired and uh, they just called it quits after this record. So yeah, it was kind of a touring band. They played with some some semi-famous names. I think Steve Miller Band was one of the, one of the bands. But yeah, privately pressed, 100 copies, almost impossible to find. It's just a mega rarity. And uh, this is reissued by La uh, Lion Productions. And they also reissued this um, maybe two years ago as well. This is a 2005 reissue. Um, sound quality is really good. Um, this album's kind of notable for its 12-minute title track, which I think a lot of people may assume that it's kind of like straight-up psychedelic blues rock, you know, given that it's 12 minutes long and the title track alone is very bluesy in spots. Uh, a lot of jamming going on. But I think I think that track overshadows a lot of great moments on here, including uh, the last track on side A, Holiday, and the one right after that on the B side, Death Song. Kind of goes in this kind of folk rock shift. Um, got a lot of garage aspects to it as well. Uh, I wouldn't say it's lo-fi. It's got actually pretty decent production. Yeah, the only the only weak spot for me, of course, is the last track, Day of Sunshine. Uh, it's just one of those very typical, slow, brooding, uh, snoozy blues tracks that really get repetitive and boring. Uh, for my taste, I should say. Overall, pretty strong. Um, nice fuzz in spots. And I, would, I should say lyrically, these guys are very potent and um, very realized lyrics, I would say. They got um, a lot of great imagery in the lyrics, and they're just they're just really well realized and actually trying to put some effort into these into these songs, um, writing wise. So yeah, picked up on that. Okay, and the last one here. Uh, this is one that I picked up outside of town, um, just about thirty miles away. Uh, went to this marble museum and had no idea what to expect when I went there. Um, it said antiques and collectibles just outside of there and was pleasantly surprised they had records. Um, you know, they're kind of into like marbles and coin collecting, that kind of thing. But they had quite a few in there, but a lot of it was like Christian, you know, a lot of dollar bin material. But in the Christian section, I was kind of surprised to find this. This is the Crusaders. Make a joyful noise with drums and guitars. This is on the tower label. This is one you rel relatively see people showing, but it's actually, to my surprise, pretty decent. It's my first time listening to this, but I've always seen this cover online in different music lists and stuff like that. And uh, it's on the Orange Tower label. This came out in 1966, you know, kind of pre-psychedelic era. And this is very nice beat music, um, kind of California-inspired beat and garage pop. Um, does have some nice rocky moments, but, you know, of course it doesn't get too heavy, but uh, very up-tempo and pretty fun and enjoyable. I had a lot of fun with this record. Um, I just listened to it tonight for the first time after I got it, you know, two weekends ago, and this was a nice surprise, really. Um, they do, of course, a lot of traditional religious tracks, Little Drummer Boy, uh, Battle Hymn of the Republic, He's got the whole world in his hands, but they also got some original tracks they do in their own way. I think it's God Lives and Praise Be or Praise We the Lord, it's called. But yeah, it talks about their origins. They're from uh, Southern California, and you know you could probably spot this for maybe ten bucks or so. Um, you just don't see this one pop up very often, but I had a good time with this record, so. If, um, and it kind of predates a lot of like gospel rock as it gets coined or Christian rock. So um, pretty enjoyable garage pop in the sort of uh, Christian rock vein. Uh, really enjoyed that one and it's relatively cheap. So all worked out. 
Okay, so that about does it, and I hope you guys enjoyed keeping this relatively short. And I don't know, I may do one more trip video before the surprise video. We shall see. And uh, that about wraps it up. So until then, take care, stay safe, and we shall see you soon.